This just about sums up where we are in the season. Everything's got buds on it and everything's just waiting for slightly better weather and higher temperatures before going for it as we come into spring. Welcome to Proper DIY Garden Edition, where this spring and summer you can follow me as I do projects in and around the garden, including trying to improve my lawn and trying to turn this bland new build garden into something with a bit more character as well. But today I'm going to be making a trellis for these planters that I built this time last year. This is a star jasmine or confederate jasmine and I think this season it's going to start really blooming and start going for it. So it needs a trellis up the back. So that's the main project today and before we do that I'm going to show you some of the things I've been getting up to this week. All of that after the intro. <laughs> At this time in March, spring is most definitely on its way and while the early flowering bulbs that were planted months ago are starting to fill the beds and borders, now is the time to sow seeds for summer flowers and veg. I'm also now planning for my future green wall, so I'm sowing some lobelia in three different colours. These are just small, compact, colourful flowers that hopefully will give some ground cover and colour to the wall over the summer. I start with the pink variety and I'm surprised how small the little white seeds are until I open the violet blue pack which contains a plastic pouch which looks empty until I see what looks like a light sprinkle of ground pepper inside. Because of the static on the bag and the fact that these seeds hardly weigh anything it was really difficult to get them out. And after ripping the bag open and hopefully brushing the contents into the tray, I won't really know if I've got anything in there for a week or two. After a quick watering, I take them into my kitchen to germinate on my conservatory shelves, which I made in October and is currently the closest thing I have to a greenhouse. I've currently got all kinds of flowers and veg in the early stages here, and you'll be able to follow their progress with me over the next few months. Anyway, on with the trellis build, and it's a nice spring day today, so I thought I'd bring my tools to the job for a change and build outside, which gives me a chance to try out this new mitosaur stand I've just bought, together with the cordless trend mitosaur. I want the trellis to stop before this down lighter and be quite narrow, around about a foot or so wide. I've never had one of these stands, I've always made do somehow, so it's nice to be able to quickly set up the extendable supports that help support the longer lengths of wood. I'm using 22 by 38 mm treated battens here and cutting the uprights 200 millimetres longer than I want them to stand above the top of the planters. That gives me 8 inches overlap to be able to fit the trellis to the planter. Three uprights for each, six in total. I then set up a stop block to cut all the short horizontal pieces to a consistent length. I take off any jagged edges I see and remove the traditional barcode stapled into the end. 
I start assembling the trellis face down so the fixings will be at the back and then centre the middle upright before fixing all three with external 40mm long screws. I'm only drilling through the top batten here, not the lower one, and at this stage not fully tightening the screws. At the other end I pick a random position and just put in a temporary fixing in the same way just to fix the frame into a parallelogram. I check and adjust it for square at the top and start fixing the next batten down using a short spacer piece that I've cut to the same length as the space between the uprights so I'll end up with a square grid type trellis. This spacer piece means that from now on I don't need to use my tape measure anymore. I check for square once more and as I'm happy I fully tighten the screws. Then it's just a repetitive process all the way down. On this trellis, the spacing means I'm using nine horizontal pieces and I'm making two trellises, one for either side of my kitchen doors. I left fixing the centre button until last just to speed things up and after 10 minutes I have the first one complete. As soon as I started painting this, I realised that it would have maybe been easier to paint the full lengths of timber before I cut anything, rather than trying to paint all around these nooks and crannies, but hey ho, you live and learn. I must say, I really do like this paint, it's the Coupinol garden shades and I used it last summer on my garage door and all the planters that you see around and a few other items as well and I wasn't too sure about it at the beginning because the first coat I put on anything made it look really quite horrible but if you put two coats on the second coat really smartens it up and um, I'll have to show you the planters after a year. They still look pretty bright. I'm going to give them another coat of paint for this summer just to brighten them up, but they're doing really well. The wind's coming up as well. Not perfect painting with heavy wind, actually. But the one positive thing is it didn't half dry quickly. Well that's the first coat on and I don't think it's going to take very long to dry, not in this wind, probably just a minute, which gives me 60 seconds to tell you that this video is being sponsored by ITS for all the tools you need. And I have to tell you that the ITS sale is now on, from now until the 28th of March, with hundreds of lines of offers across the board, including DeWalt, Makita, Milwaukee 
and the exclusive brand in the UK to ITS, Vaunt, who produce tools, storage, access, garden equipment, and some of which you would have already seen me use on my projects. If you order before 7 p.m., they guarantee next day delivery. And as usual, if you spend more than 60 pound and use the code proper DIY, you'll get this free goodie bag with your first order. So you can't say fairer than that, can you? So was that about a minute? They're dry. Before I start modifying this planter to accept the trellis, I have to relocate my friend Speedy, who I've noticed before lives here with this jasmine plant. I centre the trellis on the back of the planter and then mark each side of each upright. The overhang I have on this top piece is 25mm, so I also mark that on the top where I'll stop my cut. I get quite a tight fit on this, but you don't necessarily need to. And before I have a chance to go and get my paint, Speedy has taken up residence in the fresh cut. So, come on, back in the bed. I'm not quite sure how well this paint sticks to snail slime, but it's going on anyway. I paint the cutout areas to protect them because this is untreated wood. And then while I've got the paint and the brush out, I give the rest of the planter a quick coat just to spruce it up for the summer. Speedy tries to escape again, but this time the barrier of wet paint thwarts his attempt and then he decides to stay where he is. I use a square to ensure the trellis is perpendicular to the planter top. If it's not, you can unscrew the bottom rail and probably find enough play to straighten things up or to shim underneath it if needed. A couple of screws into each upright at the bottom is more than enough to get a good strong connection between the two here. I'll now have to buy a second jasmine to go in the planter on the right to mirror my first and then I'll replant this conifer which is now totally out of place in this part of the garden. So there you go, back to where it all started but now with two trellises ready for this jasmine to go for it over the summer and you'd be pleased to know that Speedy is absolutely fine as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on the channel and please go and have a look at our Patreon page and become a member and support the channel as well. It'd be great to see you over there with extra content and extra videos every week. So until next week, I'll see you then. You okay, Speedy? <laughs>